Luminar is a company that receives a lot of attention for developing their own light detection and ranging LiDAR sensors and supporting technologies. Outlining the capabilities and applications of Luminar's technologies can help highlight the role of LiDAR in the move towards the greater adoption of ADAS, advanced driver assistance systems, and eventually towards fully autonomous vehicles. Along the way, we'll learn more about contributions to improve safety, reliability, and cost effectiveness in the passenger and commercial vehicle markets, as well as challenges faced by this and other companies in trying to implement their technologies at scale into vehicle production. Now, before we get into the specifics of Luminar's business plans, it will be useful to get an idea of the technology they develop. For LiDAR, as you may notice, sounds like radar, which uses radio waves to detect objects, usually in the air. It also resembles the word sonar, the use of sound waves to detect objects that are often underwater. LiDAR. Light detection and ranging is the same kind of concept, except it uses light that is sent out in the form of pulses made up of laser beams that flare out in all directions to detect and create a point cloud that helps map objects that are usually on the surface of dry land. LiDAR determines the distance of objects from a sensor by timing how long it takes for the pulses it sends out to return. That means LiDAR can be a useful sensor on vehicles to assist human drivers, or as part of a system on self-driving vehicles. Luminar didn't invent LiDAR, rather they set out to improve it since early attempts to utilize it on vehicles mostly used off-the-shelf LiDAR that wasn't adequate in all cases. Their solution has essentially been to build their own, right down to the chip level. Looking at their hardware in further detail, there are products such as Iris and Iris Plus LiDAR that combine a 1550 nanometer laser, transmitter, and receiver that also provides long-range sensing paving the way for what the company terms automotive grade, efficient and affordable solutions that are scalable, reliable and optimal for series production. The LiDAR sensors are reported to be dynamically configurable dual axis scan sensors that detect objects up to 600 meters away over a horizontal field of view of 120 degrees and a software configurable vertical field of view of up to 30 degrees allowing for high point densities in excess of 200 points per square degree that enables long range detection, tracking, and classification over the whole field of view. In other words, the IRIS family of sensors has technical specifications that claim to provide more detailed mapping over a broader area and at longer distances. These sensors are also reported to meet the size, weight, cost, power, and reliability requirements of automotive qualified series production sensors, meaning they're reaching a practical threshold to be implemented into vehicle production at scale. IRIS and IRIS Plus feature Luminar's vertically integrated receiver, detector, and application-specific integrated circuit, ASIC, solutions that have been developed by their Advanced Technologies and Services, ATS, segment companies, Optigration, Freedom Photonics, and Black Forest Engineering, giving them the claim their key subcomponents are internally developed technologies. Part of their chip level up strategy, which they say gives them a significant advantage in the development of their product roadmap and a competitive moat in the LiDAR industry. On the software side of things, core sensor software is under development. It helps LiDAR sensors to be configurable and capture information from the raw point cloud that can be used to enrich the sensor data stream before perception processing. Perception and mapping software uses that enriched point cloud data from LiDAR to form actionable information about the environment surrounding a vehicle. These include details such as classifying static objects like lane markings, road surface, curbs, signs and buildings, as well as dynamic objects, such as other vehicles, pedestrians, cyclists, and animals. With these kinds of internally developed capabilities coupled with acquisitions such as Solfice, Civil Maps, Luminar expects their point cloud data to be able to continuously update a high-definition 3D map of a vehicle's environment. After that, the next piece of the programming puzzle is driving function software, which uses the 3D mapping provided by raw LiDAR data to carry out and control functions for a vehicle to avoid or mitigate collisions. Vital safety functions can then be enhanced when data from radars and cameras are added, specifically aiding with features like cross-traffic collision avoidance, traffic sign assist, emergency braking, and emergency steering. Altogether, these are referred to as Luminar's full-stack software for safety and autonomy. When these projects are completed, they're meant to enable the proactive safety TM system and highway autonomy for passenger vehicles, as well as the Sentinel system for commercial trucks. In terms of applying their technology on vehicles, Luminar has chosen to start by focusing on ADAS and proactive safety rather than autonomous driving, mainly because they quote, believe the largest near-term business opportunities exist for technologies that enhance, not replace, the driver. Luminar Site's adoption of ADAS is mostly driven by safety rating programs such as the European New Car Assessment Program, NCAP. Based on the progress of technology and the attitudes of global safety rating programs, Luminar expects adoption of at least some ADAS functionality in new vehicle manufacturing by 2026, 
mainly in Japan, South Korea, China, Europe, and the U.S. Luminar's contribution to this expected shift is their development of their turnkey ATIS system known as Proactive Safety TM, which also incorporates their core sensor and software. Its main purpose is to reduce collisions by using their LiDAR sensing system that increases the quality and reliability of the perception data collected by vehicles for improved ADES functionality, while also being effective in a wider range of environmental conditions, including at higher speeds and at night. These goals are to be achieved with Safety TM's intended functions in automatic emergency braking, automatic emergency steering, and adaptive cruise control. In simple terms, Luminar's LiDAR enhances the ability of vehicles to construct a 3D map of their surroundings to an accurate enough degree that will allow for better input into other driving functions such as steering and collision avoidance. From Luminar's perspective, the market appears to be trending in this direction, targeting hands-off and eyes-off operations in a more controlled setting than the urban environment, highlighting why their other main focus is highway autonomy. The rationale being driving on highway settings presents less variables and room for complications compared to urban environments that are generally more diverse and complex. Enabling for a more gradual and smoother transition to driver-assistive technologies and eventually towards fully autonomous vehicles. Based on this position, Luminar is ambitious, but not too unrealistically ambitious, in that they won't take the big leap to fully self-driving vehicles right away. Instead, they focus on what is more technologically attainable while still targeting large market opportunities in ADAS. The company specifically has the expectation their LiDAR-based systems will be adopted, quote, over time as ADAS and autonomous functionalities mature, hardware costs and prices are reduced, and consumers become more familiar with the full benefits and capabilities of a safe autonomy system. Further reiterating the perspective of jumping gradually but not leaping forward in a single bound, that's why the commercial trucking market is particularly attractive, since it is well-suited for the approach Luminar has initially chosen. Trucking highway autonomy combined with LiDAR-based systems offers benefits to improved safety, lower operating costs, increased vehicle utilization, and more time spent on the road, according to Luminar. In sharp contrast, the robo-taxi market is far away on the fully autonomous side of the driving spectrum. However, the company states, the robo-taxi market remains an important market for LiDAR, both for near-term validation and for long-term demand. Meaning while full self-driving won't immediately be a direct focus, the market is still going to be relevant, especially for technological proof of concept and real-world testing scenarios in the eventual move towards complete autonomous driving. The other category of opportunity Luminar identifies is simply called adjacent markets. Their way of saying other miscellaneous markets that can benefit from their technology. Remember, LiDAR is a technology that already existed. This company merely set out to make it better with the specific focus of applying it to the use case of driving. Some examples of other use cases are last mile delivery, aerospace and defense, robotics and security, all of which could be sectors Luminar branches out into, though for now their stated goals are to first scale in their core markets and then, quote, serve these adjacent markets where it makes sense for us and our partners. Then, as their full-stack software continues development, efforts have been undertaken to expand production capabilities for LiDAR hardware, which has progressed comparatively further. For instance, progress has been made towards Iris LiDAR sensor production at a dedicated manufacturing facility in Mexico, under an agreement with Celestica and Fabrinet. Likewise, there has been mention of a similar plan underway for a high-volume facility in Asia, as part of a contract manufacturing services agreement with TPK. International reach also extends to research and development, which takes place in the United States, Germany, Sweden, China, and India. R&D efforts have the end goal for LiDAR to become well-suited for manufacturability and testability so that reliability can be established for commercial manufacturing to be scaled up. Overall, the road from research and development to commercial production is fraught with difficulty and uncertainty that Luminar aptly outlines as affecting them and other companies involved in technology related to ADAS and autonomous vehicles. After all, testing and qualification with automakers can often last for several years. Moreover, automaker agreements don't tend to guarantee potential volumes or timing of purchases to their suppliers during this product development cycle. Rather, it is more common for an initial research and feasibility agreement to be followed up with extensive competitive negotiations that are then preceded by development agreements that establish collaborations or partnerships to develop and integrate technology into the automaker's vehicles or platforms intended for series production. After that, it's not uncommon for non-recurring engineering NRE projects. These kinds of initial collaboration or partnership agreements provide automakers the right to terminate the relationship without purchasing any production volume. 
However, terminating agreements at those early stages may not always occur due to factors such as difficulty of integrating complex technologies, sunken costs relating to NRE projects, impact on product roadmap, time to market, and risk of being unable to secure future supply. Luminar states sales to customers at early stages primarily for R&D projects and collaboration or partnership projects tend to present the potential for significant fluctuations in quarterly and annual results of operations, highlighting the importance of getting all the way to binding commitments with automakers. Luminar notes, automakers typically only enter into blanket purchase orders or other definitive supply agreements with binding commitments several months before production is expected to begin. They only declare what they call major commercial wins when they reach this stage or have, quote, reason to believe that such engagement is expected to result in future series production. So the journey to have components like Luminar's LiDAR systems be integrated into commercial production is one of high risk and high reward that spans a long and largely uncertain timeline, a process that is followed up by additional risk if the amount and timing of future sales is off. Acquiring customers during the transition from product development to commercial production is critical and time sensitive. Especially since the early stages of LiDAR product adoption has leaned towards a few main customers that make up the bulk of orders. Additional risk that balances out the immense opportunity in the market is if the average selling prices of LiDAR products decrease rapidly over their lifespan. Then in the event a technology is accepted by automakers for commercial production, Luminar and its peers need to navigate and comply with government regulations, which fall into two main categories. The first concerns topics ranging from active safety and driver assist to conditional autonomy while the second category covers higher autonomy that involves partial through full autonomy. Unsurprisingly, the first category generally has positive attitudes and acceptance for adoption around the world, whereas higher autonomy tends to be confined to the safe testing and development of autonomous functions, rather than consumer use in personal vehicles and commercial use for automated trucking and taxis. Now, a unique characteristic Luminar shares in common with Rocket Lab, which we covered two weeks ago, is the vital importance of their founder, president, and chief executive officer. For Luminar, this would be Austin Russell. Since he created the company's first LiDAR product, it has been stated he remains deeply involved in all aspects of the business and product development. Moreover, he is still instrumental in the company's ability to compete and manage R&D activities, as well as his key role in retaining existing customers and attracting new ones. All characteristics common to these kinds of companies that have their drive for technological innovation stem from ambitious founders. If you like this video, you will definitely be interested in the video on Rocket Lab. Please watch it while you wait for the next upload coming very soon, and remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.